The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. Where are the car keys? Oh, for I... heaven's sakes, dear, we go through this every morning. Look in your pockets. I looked in my pockets. They're not there. Well, I don't know, I swear. Look on the desk. What uh, is it? What are you looking for? I'm looking for my car keys. And oh. Effie, look in the dining room on the buffet, will oh, you? Oh, they wouldn't be there. Why would I put them on the buffet? Oh, don't oh. ask me why you'd put them anywhere. Oh, get the phone, will I you? I found them one morning in the bathtub. Hello. Well, there's still a mystery yes. to me how they ever got in that bathtub. I, I know I never put them in the yes, bathtub. Yes, well, he's rushing off to work. Ridiculous. Who is this? Can I take a message? Oh, who is it? I... Oh, Jack, I didn't recognize you. No, look, I can't talk to him. Tell him I'll call him when I get downtown. You can't talk, Jack. He's so late now. Yeah. The huh? car keys aren't anywhere in the dining room. Look in your pockets. Aunt Effie, I looked in my pocket. Jack oh. says it's about Mr. Wallace and the contract with the modeling agency. Tell him I... Oh, oh, give <gasps> it here, give it here. here. Yeah. Oh, Hello, why Jack. Why he put the car keys yeah. in a special place when he comes home every night? Then yeah. he wouldn't have this rushing around every morning. Well, you ask him. Oh, I, wonder, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell her. Okay, Jack. Yeah, all right, I understand. Thanks for calling. Yeah, well, Jack says we don't have a leg to stand on. He's looked over the contract we signed with Wallace, and we did agree to everything in it. But it didn't say they were using Betsy for a picture like that. Look, darling, I'm only telling you what Jack said. Now, he's a lawyer. He must know more than we do about it. He says either we go through with it, or the agency can sue us. Well, I don't think they do that. Well, Jack says they can. What would they sell us for? I don't know. Not keeping the agreement. Anyhow, they got more money than we have, and... If they want to get nasty, they could certainly make things tough for us. Well, what do we do? Well, what is this all about? Well, it seems that... The Look, I've got to go. I got, I'm late now. Well, what'll I do about it? Well, Jack says Mr. Wallace will be calling you this morning that he wants to bring the photographer out today and wind up the deal. They're way behind schedule now, and Wallace claims we've made him lose a good deal of precious time. Well, what'll so... I do? I mean, I don't care what Jack says. I will not let Betsy's picture be used for anything like that. Betsy was just going to advertise a tonic for children, wasn't she? Yes, but, it, well, it's more complicated yeah. than that. Well, where anything. are the Dear? car keys? I... Well, aren't you interested in your daughter? You're going to let them just take the picture? Sweetheart, I can't You're... think about it right now. I am so late. I got an important appointment at the office. But I... if I think of yes. something to get out of it, will you back me up? Yes, yes, All I'll right, back you up. Here. Yes. What are these keys? And Effie, uh, oh, well, they're the car keys. Now, how do they get on the ivy plant? I have no idea. I really think we have spooks around here. All right, goodbye, goodbye. We got spooks. Goodbye, Aunt Effie. Goodbye. I'll goodbye, call you dear. later. All right, dear. Well, now, what is this all about Betsy's picture? Well, How are you trying to get out of it? I thought she was getting $400 modeling for this. Well, yes, yes, she was, but... Oh! Now he forgot his oh. briefcase. Just a minute, Aunt Effie. I tell you, getting him off to work in the morning is a real... Dear. Goodness, you shouldn't stay out so long without a coat. What were you doing? Oh, I handed him his briefcase, and mm -hmm. it wasn't closed, and all the papers fell out and blew all over. <laughs> So we were chasing them around the yard. <laughs> He's in a fine humor. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, now, will you please tell me about Betsy? Oh, yes. Well, I, I didn't tell you before. We were so upset about it, we didn't want anybody to know, well, really. my goodness, I'm not just anybody. Oh, I should say you're not an Effie. <laughs> you're going to be just as mad as we were. Point was, I thought it was all over, and now we've got to think up something. Maybe if I just packed up and Betsy and I went home with you for a few days... Well... I don't know yet what the trouble is. Well, it's too long to go into how we found out, but the reason they wanted Betsy and the reason they were willing to pay mm -hmm. so much for her picture to advertise Tompkins Tonic is because they thought she looked puny and oh. sort of unhealthy. Puny? Unhealthy? Oh, we were just sick about it. Betsy is certainly not puny. Why, she's a lovely, dainty little girl. But she's not unhealthy. No. But you see, they weren't going to take a good picture of her anyhow. Why not? Well, it's... well, it's true that snapshots don't always do her justice, but with a professional photographer, he ought to be able to... They don't want her to look nice. Don't you see? That's the point. Oh. She's... Well, you know how you've seen advertisements that say before and after taking something? Mm -hmm, well, yes. Betsy was supposed to be the before taking Tompkins tonic. Why? Oh! Well, yes. I guess they had a little girl for the after taking part, a rather husky child. And 
Betsy resembled her, so they think. I can't see it. Maybe something about the eyes, and they both have braided well, pigtails or something. You know, well, I, I could... have never. I know, I know. And, of course, we signed a contract agreeing to the picture, although none of this was in the contract, needless no. to say. Well, you, know, you they... just tell them you are not going to do it. I did. You heard what Jack Lundell said when he phoned just now. They can sue us if they want to be unpleasant. Oh, mm-hmm. Now, tell me something else. This Wallace fellow in his crooked outfit. Well, I guess he's not really crooked at it. He sounds you know. crooked to me. How can they sue you? Well, if we aren't willing to let them take Betsy's picture. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I don't always understand about all these things. When people talk about lawsuits and suing and all that, I always feel they aren't the kind of people you want to know, anyhow. Yes, well, we know them whether we want to or not. Mm -hmm. Their Chicago outfit probably have very clever lawyers, you know. Mr. Wallace, I think, refers to us as sort of local yokels. Oh, he does. Yes. Well, honestly, we have so much now with the new house and everything, we can't afford to get involved in a lawsuit. I suppose I'll have to go through with it. Fortunately, there won't be any names on the picture. Well, I don't care. We're certainly not going to let them outsmart us. Well, come on, let's do the breakfast dishes and then sit down and have another cup of coffee anyhow. Oh. Well, aren't you going to answer it? But maybe that Mr. Wallace. Jack said he was going to call me early. I don't know what to tell him. Well, tell him you're ready to go through with it. Oh, well, I'm not. I, I'm still... Aunt Effie. Now, hello? Oh, it was... Yes, this is their residence. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, she said to tell you if you call that any time would be all right as soon as Betsy gets home from school. Four o'clock? Fine. Aunt Effie, what mm -hmm. are you doing? All right. Thank you. Aunt Effie, look, I appreciate your interest and your sympathy. Well, you're but going to appreciate not... my horse sense a lot more. Now get your coat on, because we've got a lot to do. There he is. Aunt Effie, is Betsy ready? Yes, we're all set. We'll come down the stairs when the photographer is all set up. All right, dear. Well, Mr. Wallace. Hello. Right on the nose. Four o'clock. We'll get it over with as quickly as possible. And I do want to say that I'm really sorry we've had any unpleasantness about this. Oh, all. I am too. Here, let me take your coat, Mr. Wallace. <sighs> Thanks. Well, I'm glad to see you feel that way. I, I can assure you I've been greatly distressed to have caused you any unhappiness at all. Oh, well, thank you. Shall I close the door as your photographer oh, coming right yes, in? Oh, yes, yes, you might as well. Oh. He's just getting things out of the car. It may take him a few minutes. Well, no sense cooling off the whole house, as my mother always says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> well, I must say, I'm delighted to find you in a better frame of mind about all this. I can assure you that you made a wise choice. Lawsuits can be so unpleasant, not to say costly. And while we would have hated to bring suit, my agency does have its own integrity to maintain. Oh, yes, of course I do understand, really. Well, that's fine. Is uh, Betsy ready? Oh, yes, Betsy! Come on down, dear. I trust she's wearing the blue jeans and jersey. I should hate to have another repetition of that day. Oh, I had no trouble getting her into them at all. She's so pleased with something else. Oh, <laughs> there you are, dear. Hello, Mr. Wallace. And this is my husband's aunt, Miss Sorensen. How do you Mr. do, Wallace. Mr. Wallace? <laughs> well, what did you do? Oh, oh, I know permanents never look nice when you first get them. A permanent? <laughs> well, Betsy's always wanted curly hair, so... I had my hair done at the beauty parlor, Mr. Wallace, and it was fun. But she's supposed to have pigtails. Well, you know, I thought of that later. Remember, Aunt Effie, mm -hmm. I said, I wonder if this will make mm -hmm. any difference in the picture they yes, want, you know? Yes, I said, that's right, you did say that. <laughs> I, then mm -hmm. I forgot. Betsy was so anxious to have curls, and we had bangs cut and had those curled, too. She looks just like a little fairy princess, don't you, dear? <laughs> Comb it back. See what you can do with it. Oh, we can't do a thing with it. And if you put water on it, it just gets frizzy. You see, they said that her hair was of such a texture that if they didn't put it, you know, it, put it in fairly tight, it just wouldn't last mm -hmm. at all. I like it. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. of course you do, darling. Why does it really make that much difference, Mr. Wallace? Oh, dear, the after-taking girl does have braids, doesn't she? Oh, isn't that stupid of me to forget? Well, you did remember, dear, but you forgot again. Yes. <laughs> well, anyhow, Mr. Wallace, we are ready, willing, and able to have the picture taken. You think you're very clever, don't you? Well, yes, we do, young man. Well, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I once knew a man from Chicago, and he was just as shady a character as you are. And the next time you try to outsmart the local yokels, as you put it. Oh, forget it. Where's my coat? Just forget the whole thing. 
Boy, I tell you, I... Oh, here's your contract. Here. Here. Now, let's just pretend none of this ever happened, huh? Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Well, isn't he going to take my picture? No, dear. Why? Well, Mommy can't explain, mm. dearest. I want my picture well, taken. I look pretty. I got curly now, hair. Now, Betsy, your Mommy is right. Yes. But I want my picture taken. It was going to be in a magazine. Why didn't he take it? Why? <laughs> We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. Next to being Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas, or any one of the other first-rate CBS News reporters, the best way we know of to keep right up to the minute with what is happening in the world is to get the latest word on current events from people like Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas. In addition to their years of training and their broad experience, each of these men brings to his CBS News reports a firm respect for the truth an extraordinarily good judgment in sorting out what is most important in any day's developments. If you enjoy the adventure of living in our 20th century world, and if you want your news brought to you by reliable newsmen, by all means, rely on Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas, and their colleagues at CBS News for reports that are interesting, up to the minute, accurate, and unclouded by personal bias. Remember, you can hear Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas five days a week over most of these same stations. Be sure to listen for them this evening. And she is just heartbroken. We have got to take her picture. I am due at the businessmen's dinner. I have to be there. I'm introducing the speaker. But how long does it take to snap a picture? I got the camera and the flash bulbs. One second. That is all, Look, dear. taking pictures around here gets to be a big production. Let's take them Sunday. Her curls won't last. It isn't a permanent. I just implied it was to Mr. Wallace. Oh. Now, look, it's all our fault. For weeks now, we have talked about having her picture taken for some magazine. She's all keyed up about it. And Aunt Effie is putting on her new dress, and she has curls. You've said yourself the worst thing is to promise a child something and then not come through. Oh, there she is. Look, Daddy. And yeah, Betsy. look, I don't think we've got any indoor film. You get Betsy set, and I'll fly down to the drugstore oh, no, and no, get no. it. I'll get the film. Just tell me what you want. Well, Don't I look nice, Daddy? Uh, Daddy? Yes, dear, yes, yes. You look absolutely beautiful, darling. Are you going to take my picture, Daddy? Uh, yes, yes. Now, look, I don't have much time. It won't but... take a second. Let me move this chair by the fireplace and put the end table with the flowers. No, no, right they don't go it. moving any furniture around. Look, this there isn't won't, time. This won't take a minute, dear. Oh. Tell Aunt Effie what film you want. Oh, Aunt Effie, you've changed your dress, too. <laughs> Oh, honey, you'll have to get one of her. Aunt Effie looks just oh, lovely. No, no, no. It doesn't matter about me. <laughs> oh, it does, too. You're certainly going to have your picture taken, too, oh. Aunt Effie. Oh, no, no. I take terrible pictures. I'd break the camera. Oh, <laughs> nonsense, you take Daddy, lovely. are you going to put my picture in the magazine? Uh, well, dear, I... I thought maybe, honey, you could you could put it in your businessmen's club magazine. You know, they often have informal snapshots of members. You know, yeah, that's only part. when somebody catches a big fish or goes hunting and gets a deer. Well, Betsy's a deer, aren't you, uh, huh? <laughs> well... <laughs> dear little girl, Daddy will try and get it in his club magazine, Betsy. I'm Look, sure I he will. Look, I don't have anything to do well, you with... you can try. My goodness, isn't your daughter more important than a fish? <laughs> <laughs> well... Now, what film do you need? Well, I've written it down here. And anything Effie... else you need at the drugstore as long as I'm going? Oh, yes, a loaf of bread. Oh, oh boy. The grocery's right next door. Yeah. Won't take her a second. Isn't this fun, Betsy? <laughs> yes. I don't know why we don't do this Sunday when we have more time. Because on Sunday we wouldn't do it. You bought an expensive camera and flash bulb equipment when Betsy was born. You were going to take pictures constantly and put them in a scrapbook to show how she changed from week to week, practically. Well, we're lucky if we have any to show how she changes from year to year. Isn't that true? Yes, 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 it is. It is. You're right, you're right. Well, I'll call down there and say I'm going to be late. No, you I... won't be late, dear. This won't take a second. Just snap oh, the shutter. Sure. That's... <laughs> oh, boy, what's now, the let's use? See if I'm... <laughs> the Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Margaret Hamilton, Francie Myers, and Alexander Clark and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz, inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door.